Welcome back. A new amendment to the Electoral Act has excluded the possibility of voters challenging credentials submitted to the Independent National Electoral Commission by candidates. The proposed law, if signed by President Mohammed Buhari, will allow only those who participated in the party primaries to challenge in court the school certificate, the birth certificate, and other credentials of a co-contestant. Currently, all Nigerians are allowed to challenge the credentials of candidate of any political party. These have been reaffirmed by several court judgments. Now, joining us to discuss this is Jide Ologun, a legal practitioner, and Paul James, the program manager, elections, uh, Yaga Africa. Many thanks, uh, gentlemen, for joining us on this particular discuss this time around. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you. All right, let me start with you, Barrister GD Ologo. I need you to break this whole uh, new uh, amendment, as it were, to us, if you would, because uh, if it is allowed to, you know, see the light of day, you know, Nigerians will seemingly not really have so much, you know, uh, uh, say as it is uh, in uh, primaries and, of course, um, all the issues that they ordinarily would want to comment. Currently, Section 31, uh, subsection 5 of the Electoral Act reads that any person who has reasonable grounds to believe that any information given by a candidate uh, in the affidavit of, or any uh, document submitted by that candidate is false may file a suit at the Federal High Court. So... Exactly what do we have in our hands, Barrister Ologun? You know, an attempt to limit it to a candidate participating at the primary is trying to erode accountability, which is a crucial requirement in good leadership. And we may as well say that we don't even need anyone with credentials to come and contest for these offices. And then... Um, we were even still talking about the introduction of the consensus candidate, mm -hmm. then the retention of the uh, indirect primary as a way of prompting candidates. Now we have this that is taking the local standard away from Nigerians who should be interested in those who come in to govern them. Because the risk here is that if you limit it to the party, then the party may just as well overlook some of the offenses. Recall that in 2019, the celebrated case of Bayesa State, where uh, Duyo Diri filed a suit against the governor's candidate of uh, APC, who already was even, you know, in the in the rehearsal for the inauguration into office. But the court disqualified him and the uh, the running mate because of. Uh, a questionable school certificate, and it touches on integrity. If people with questionable school credentials get into office, what do you expect from them? And the Supreme Court agreed that the PDP should take over from the APC, despite the fact that the APC had already been declared winner by, by INA. And then if, if we want people who are trusted, to occupy offices, then we should not narrow it down. But having said that also, this may be an attempt in futility, because whether you like it or not, we still have the Freedom of Information Act. Whether you still have it, uh, like it or not, we still have the pejory uh, aspect of the law. So this serious crime should not be covered off by the National Assembly trying to masquerade. And it's really shameful, I must say, that the hallowed chambers that should be seen to be raising the bar of credibility, of competence, of accountability, is coming up with a proposed amendment like this. It's really it's, it's worrisome. And some of us hope that they, they, they try to backtrack. All right, then. Thanks um, for your opening salvo, um, Barrister Ologo. Let's bring um, Paul James into this discussion right now. You have been monitoring elections uh, in Nigeria, and uh, over time, you've seen uh, these issues of litigations that have crept up, you know, because of a uh, certificate uh, who is qualified pre-election matters and all of that. So, if you were just to just look at it on the face value, what does this, you know, what would it really impact on the election processes in Nigeria going forward? I think you have captured it rightly because these are the fears that we have expressed and also I like the opening comments by uh, Barrister Jide 
Um, our fear as school societies, especially because we have focused so much attention on other aspects of the bill, that uh, we didn't see when this one, uh, uh, I mean, when this one uh, uh, came to light until the conversation started a few days ago. And so we are even worried that perhaps there might be other obnoxious clauses on this bill that may impinge on the integrity of the electoral process. Don't forget the conversation uh, by as of July last year was about electronic transmission. Early this, I mean, uh, early this year, the conversation was about uh, mode of conducting primaries. And here we are again also about the right for of candidates to appeal for, uh, the right for people to appeal for the qualification of candidates in the election. Yes, I agree that we might see the rising cases of litigation, especially because people will, uh, like uh, Judy has said, people will definitely explore the possibility of the FOI deal. And INEP will be inundated with this request. So I think um, if we still have the window, the National Assembly should revise itself on this. All right, let me stay with you, um, Paul James. So, so do you really think Nigerians uh, may be uh, in for bigger surprises since we don't really know the extent of uh, you know, this amendment to this uh, new law? Well, yeah, that is why we have been clamoring that this will have been uh, passed into law earlier than now, because a lot of voter sensitization needs to happen in this regard. Uh, besides, before you put this law into practice, you also need a lot of time to put a lot of things in place. Um, this is just from the National Assembly. We also don't know what might happen if it gets to the president. That is also another fear that we, uh, uh, as civil society, we have been expressing. Yeah. Um, we, I wish there would be more time to really scrutinize this bill, but then as it is, it is better we have the bill than to have no bill at all, given the experience, the past experience. Whatever it is, I think going forward, then we can make any other appeal and see how we can revise it to, uh, to status quo. All right, uh, let's get back to the barrister, Jide uh, Ologun. You talked about, uh, you know, having um, the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, you also talked about um, the credibility of um, the National Assembly. And, uh, you know, right now they are seemingly, you know, masquerading, you know, themselves with um, this uh, uh, procurement or preclusion, as it were. You know, j judging by the fact that the National Assembly, you know, make, uh, you know makes all of these laws, uh, why would you think they would rather want to bring uh, about such a uh, well, I say uh, confusion in the politics, as it were, when they should ordinarily know better. You know, maybe it's the absence of a deep understanding of purpose. If you look at Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 as amended, that sets up the National Assembly, it says that that assembly shall make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. So if we now begin to relegate the relevance of competence, intellectual competence, you know, sound mind and hands on the matter uh, to the background, then what kind of governance are we going to deliver to people? And by extension, perhaps quite a number of them that are there are with questionable certificates. The likes of us who appreciate the purpose of education will never subscribe to such a provision. If you look at the, the Chinese profile on, on governance, the process of selecting Chinese government leadership is so sophisticated that the Americans envy them. And so why should we come to the point where and we, we now begin to operate as if we are a tout nation? But are we surprised when you look at the fact that right now bandits are almost taking over the country. We have a massive and disturbing profile of insecurity in the land, poverty in the land. And you begin to ask yourself, really, where is the mandate of the constitution as enshrined in section 14, subsection 2 of the Nigerian Constitution 1990 as amended that says that the security and the welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. So if they understand why they are in the National Assembly, they may not come up with uh, proposals like this. You know, but like I said earlier, maybe quite a number of them uh, are within the bracket of those who cannot showcase their credentials. And of course, you don't try to cripple the law. You try to enhance the capacity of the law. And that's why some of us are concerned and we're expressing 
that concern right now. But having said all this, this provision, even if passed into law, cannot remove my right to go to court to challenge anyone who has deceived us by presenting questionable credentials. You know, and if you read section 15 of section 5 of the Nigerian Constitution 1919 as amended, an act of the National Assembly, it says that the state shall abolish corruption and abuse of, 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 of office. So when you put all this together, when we are now taking the local standard, the right of the citizens to challenge a crime, and what are we trying to say? You know, so it's, uh, I, I think they, they need to wake up in that National Assembly. I've said it. We have 109 senators, 360 House of Rest members expected to be representing Nigerians. But exactly who are they representing? Who are they representing? So, so for those clarity, Barrister Ologo, so invariably, if this were allowed you know, to scale through, ordinarily to be a nullity, is that what you're saying? Definitely, but you see, we are in a country that is unique. They have told the world that they have identified 400 sponsors of Boko Haram. Until now, no one has been named. No one has been brought for prosecution. And so how do you describe such a nation? You see, so, and, and, and that is why we keep praying that, um, you know, something happens that puts us on the pedestal of good governance. We have the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations that will be, you know, evaluated in year 2030. How much of those goals have we embraced? You can see how difficult it has been for our president to declare the bandits are terrorists. You can see the bloodshed across the nation. You can see the inflation rate. You can see the unemployment rate. You can see the fact that as we speak now, our total indebtedness as a nation is in the threshold of about 39 trillion naira. It was 12.12 .12 trillion naira around March in 2015. So, I mean, what where exactly are we going? Mm. That's the point. Like I said earlier, the National Assembly has a mandate to make laws for the peace, order, and good governance of Nigeria. And anything short of that, we amount to waste of resources and 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 and, and these times of, the, of great Nigerians by going to that hollow chamber. They said they are there for themselves just to enjoy the goodies of office. But having said all this, mm. they can either secure the future or mortgage the future. But proposed mm. laws like this mm. may end up mortgaging the future. All right, thank we should you, be getting the uh, thank you, Barrister um, Ologo. Uh, let's um, talk to uh, Paul James. You know, Paul, you raised some concern, and, and indeed I am also concerned, you know, because as uh, from what we hear today, the Senate has passed uh, the harmonized version of the Electoral Act uh, Amendment Bill, you know, you know, what with the back and forth that we had with um, direct, indirect primaries, and of course, um, the consensus, you know, you know, candidate and everything. So what do we really have right now? Because a whole lot of Nigerians are seemingly not not, you know, well informed about this particular, you know, act as it is, and uh, we are in the middle of an election year. So, what exactly do we see happening when Nigerians are not so sensitized concerning these new changes that we have in uh, our process of conducting elections in the country? Well, I think we have something that has been happening in Nigeria, although not uh, in a more recognized way. Uh, if you think about even some of the parties and the way they elected their leaders. PDP, for instance, uh, just recently uh, decided to sit, uh, the, sit for the party chairmanship to the North Central, and somehow they had an agreement that uh, the, the, the chair of the party should come from a particular state. In some sense, that is a consensus. But then the fear is when people begin to get um, twisted, to begin to uh, dance to the tools of uh, some, uh, some, some powerful people in the party. And so it is then, it then removed the question of democracy. And so um, this is also because some persons have benefited from this in the past and they want to legalize the process. Uh, we had a party also in 2015 that uh, elected their own candidate on the platform or on the basis of consensus. That is all agreeing to uh, the consensus agreement. But then again, uh, when you don't have all of the people uh, dancing towards one direction, it becomes a problem. What we are trying to solve in one 
breath, you also open up uh, wombs in another breath, meaning we might likely also see litigation where some persons don't, where, where you don't have all members of the particular party, for instance, agreeing to how to go about the idea of a consensus. Now, um, the other, uh, the other modes of grammar is direct and indirect. A lot of questions have been raised, especially about one internal party democracy, two also about um, the, 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 the party membership. Not all of these parties have updated records of their members. And so again, that opens up another problem, another challenge, because he will controls what is seemingly as the authentic uh, uh, register of the party gets to also control what happened at that level. So oh, wow. either way you see it, we still have this challenge. That is why voter education and sensitization needs to happen. I am not sure, I mean, we have the barriers on the court, perhaps it will provide clarity on this. I, I, I am not sure what the court may say about this. This is an agreement first at the National Assembly level. I also see the possibility that this will also open up wounds for litigation in the past, with, uh, in the future, with people questioning uh, how and the manner and how this party go about engaging in all of these processes. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we must say a very big thank uh, you to our guests at uh, this time around. Them. A very big thank you to GD, a local legal practitioner, and of course, uh, Paul James, Programs and Manager Elections, uh, Yaga Africa. Thank you so much, and gentlemen, for your time. We do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. God bless Nigeria. Yeah, God yeah. bless Nigeria, indeed. Oh, thank you for staying with us. Uh, now we bring you a package where Nigerians express their opinion whether voters should be able to take candidates to court over their certificates or not. And after that, I'll be giving you my take. Well, that's not democracy. We can't contest. I mean, there should be checks and balances. The masses should be able to hear their views about what is going on, you know, with the electorate. I mean, this is not a German-German government. The electorate and the masses should be able to, you know, work hand in hand and see what is best for, for the masses of justice. We, the people, are the owners of the power. We own the power, in case they don't know. And if it means that we have to march down to National Assembly to sack every single one of them, I will be part and parcel of that. So for the legislator to tell me that I have no, I cannot question anything he says, he doesn't know what he's saying because the power was given to him by me and I can recall him if I decide to. So but all I will say is that they should not push Nigerians to the wall. And the, the issue is that, you know, there's maladministration of things in Nigeria. So the proper administration is not in place. So even if we challenge them, they have the money, monetary means to fight these things down. And they have the connection know-how to fight these things out. Okay, like for instance, maybe you are my godfather and you want me to be there so that I can pay um, homage to you. You, you, have your, you have your tentacles lined up in the way I'm going to get there. And before you know it, they will just stampede everything and put me there. And I'll be answering to him. I don't want to listen to people because even if people had gone into the sun to stand for a whole day, because I can imagine how people suffer to stay in the sun and to vote their heart or the, their right choice. But at the end of the day, the issue of godfatherism is not helping us. So even if, we, even if we are trying to question them, trying to say their opinion, that okay, they hit the nail on the head of what we want them to represent us for, but still they are not going to budge. And here is my take. The report of 486 people killed in Nigeria in three weeks leaves much to be desired. It is unacceptable. Government cannot just fold its arm and watch the people it has sworn to protect die each passing day. To think that in the first week of the year, a President Mohamed Buhari said the country is more secure. Alas, it is as though life has turned full circle on us. So I believe this is one area Nigerians must pressure the government because we cannot continue to live in this very insecure environment. Don't forget that the security crisis also has very big implications for food security, inflation, hunger and agricultural production. So we really need to call on the government to be more purposeful in addressing these challenges. My name is Justin Akadenya. See you again tomorrow. Bye for now.